In today's conundrum, we will cover the case of Lee Chun Jae, a chilling figure in South Korea's history, known for his horrific crimes during the Hwaseong serial murders. From 1986 to 1994, he ruthlessly murdered 15 women and young girls, inflicting unspeakable horrors in Hwaseong, Gyeonggi, and its surrounding areas. These heinous acts remained a mystery for 30 haunting years, making them the most infamous serial murders in South Korea's modern history. The 2003 film Memories of Murder drew inspiration from these dark events, forever etching them into the nation's memory. Welcome back to Conundrum, where we delve into the minds and history of serial killers. If you like this type of content, please like, subscribe, and put the notifications bell on so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Thank you for being here. Lee Chun Jae, born on January 31, 1963, had a seemingly normal upbringing and a good education. His mother, interviewed at the age of 75 in 2019, described him as someone who worked well with others. After completing high school in February 1983, Lee joined the Republic of Korea Army and served as a tank driver until his discharge on January 23, 1986. He then found employment at an electric parts company and later worked as a crane driver without a license at a construction company in Cheongpa, Yongsan. In 1992, he got married but eventually became an alcoholic and a violent husband and father, subjecting his wife and son to physical abuse. Lee's criminal history began in September 1989 when he broke into a house in Gwangju, Suwon, armed with weapons and gloves. He was caught by the landlord and sentenced to one year and six months in prison for robbery and violence in the first trial. Lee appealed, claiming he had entered the house while being chased by an unknown man who had beaten him. In the second trial, his sentence was suspended, and he was released in mid-April 1990 after two years of probation. Between September 1986 and April 1991, unidentified suspect carried out a series of rapes and murders known as the Hwaseong Serial Murders in the rural city of Hwaseong, Gyeonggi Province. His victims, all women, were found bound, gagged, raped, and often strangled with their own clothing. These horrific crimes triggered the largest criminal investigation in South Korea's history, involving over 21,000 suspects and extensive manpower. Despite years of investigations, the cases remained unsolved for three decades until 2019. The final murder occurred on April 3, 1991, when Gwon Soon Sang was found raped and strangled with pantyhose on a hill. The Hwaseong serial murders investigation was extensive and involved significant resources. The police dedicated 2 million man days to the case, and the number of suspects reached 21,280. Fingerprints from 40,116 individuals were taken, and DNA and hair samples from 570 and 180 individuals, respectively, were analyzed. During the investigation, Rumors circulated that the killer targeted women wearing red clothes on rainy days, leading to some female police officers wearing red in an attempt to lure him. A suspect sketch was created based on the accounts of a bus driver and conductor who witnessed a man boarding a bus shortly after the seventh murder. The suspect was described as a thin-framed man in his mid-20SS with specific physical characteristics. Initially, the police believed the suspect had blood type B, but it was later discovered to be inaccurate. In 1989, a man named Yoon Sung Yo was arrested for the murder of the eighth victim. However, it was determined to be a copycat crime, and Yoon was sentenced to life in prison. The tenth murder had distinct differences in genes, location, and method, suggesting a different culprit. The murders mainly occurred between 19 o'clock and 23 o'clock, except for the first crime. Tragically, at least four individuals suspected of involvement took their own lives in the 1990s due to alleged abuse by the police. The case gained renewed public interest with the release of the film Memories of Murder in 2003, and a 2004 murder in Hwaseong raised fears of a serial killer's return. 
The statute of limitations for the most recent victims expired on April 2, 2006, but evidence and police records were preserved for their significance. Lee's life took a dark turn when his wife left him in December 1993. Consumed by anger and resentment, he hatched a sinister plan. Inviting his 18-year-old sister-in-law to his home, he lured her into his trap. On January 13, 1994, he drugged, raped, and brutally ended her life. To conceal his horrific act, Lee feigned concern and joined his father-in-law in reporting her as a possible abduction victim. But the police grew suspicious of his behavior and subjected him to intense questioning. In a chilling moment, Lee inquired about the prison terms for rape and murder, providing a glimpse into his guilt. Although he initially denied any involvement, his coerced confession was later overturned by the court. Yet justice eventually caught up with him. In May 1994, Lee was convicted and handed a death sentence. While his sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment with a possibility of parole after 20 years, his heinous crimes would forever stain his name. Little did anyone know that this was just the beginning of the chilling saga surrounding Lee. Years later, on September 18, 2019, the police made a startling revelation. Lee was identified as a suspect in a series of unsolved serial murders. DNA evidence linked him to the crimes, including the murder of his sister-in-law. Initially, Lee vehemently denied any involvement in the serial killings. However, on October 2, 2019, he shocked the world by confessing to the murders of 14 people, including all 10 victims in the serial killings. His confession also encompassed additional crimes, such as multiple rapes and attempted rapes. As the truth unraveled, it became clear that Lee suffered from a weak self-esteem and a desire for recognition. His mandatory military service provided him with a fleeting sense of accomplishment and self-reliance, which later fueled his deviant acts. The police labeled him a psychopath, devoid of empathy for his victim's suffering. Finally, on November 15, 2019, the police concluded that Lee was responsible for all 10 serial murders, bringing an end to the 33-year-old case. His insatiable sexual desire drove him to commit heinous acts, leaving a trail of tragedy and despair. In the midst of this revelation, another victim of injustice emerged. Yoon Sung Yo, wrongfully convicted and sentenced to life in prison, appealed his ruling. News of Lee's confession prompted a closer look at Yoon's case. It was revealed that Lee's confession meticulously matched the details of the murder for which Yoon was convicted. The shocking revelation raised concerns about the possibility of an innocent man enduring years of imprisonment. Evidence surfaced of Yoon's mistreatment and false confession under police coercion. In December 2019, the investigators responsible for Yoon's wrongful conviction faced charges of abuse of power and illegal detention. Yoon's plea for a retrial was granted in January 2020, leading to a decisive court hearing on November 2, 2020. Lee, now a witness, confessed to the murder and described the crime scene, solidifying Yoon's innocence. On December 17, 2020, Yoon Sung Yo was finally acquitted of murder, and the court found Lee guilty, despite the statute of limitations having expired. In the tragic case that unfolded, one cannot ignore the profound sadness of Yoon Sung Yo, who endured nearly two decades of imprisonment for a crime he did not commit. It is a stark reminder of the potential flaws in our justice system and the devastating consequences that wrongful accusations can have on innocent lives. Yoon's story serves as a haunting example, raising unsettling questions about how many more individuals might be languishing behind bars, bearing the weight of unjust convictions. How many lives have been irreparably shattered by the failure of our legal system to protect the innocent? It is our collective responsibility to shed light on such cases and seek justice for those who have been unjustly accused. If you, the viewers, are aware of any other disturbing cases of wrongful accusations, I implore you to come forward, share your knowledge, and let the truth be heard.
I am Alex and this was Conundrum. I hope you liked this video. Stay curious and stay safe.